So this is going to be part two to the Amtron PM9600 board. If you remember from part one, we installed a 233 megahertz MMX CPU, played around with it, made sure it worked, updated the BIOS, and found out that it supported a 333 megahertz K62, which was kind of neat. So this video, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the two processors just to see how much of a difference there is in performance between the Intel Pentium and the AMD K62. We're also going to go ahead and figure out the mystery of the J3 connector here. If you remember, we weren't sure what it was, but I hypothesized that it might be USB. And while wasn't completely off on that one, turns out after doing some research that that is known as a ATX form factor port for an ATX form factor card. And what that does, and I'll try to overlay an image on screen, but just in case I also have this printout, what it does is it basically gives you connectivity for a PS2 mouse port, an infrared port, as well as two USB 1 ports, making uh, this and other AT motherboards compatible with the ATX form factor, as well as the, well, the form spec, not the actual physical factor but also the PC 97 and 98 specs that were uh, coming out at the time. But in terms of the pinout itself, the first four pins do line up with USB. You've got your voltage, ground, as well as the plus and minus uh, data transfer, basically. So I should be able to get USB working on here, but I'll have to install an operating system that supports it. If there's time in this video, we'll do that at the end. But for now, let's get a CPU back in here, some RAM, a video card, sound card, and run some benchmarks. So here's uh, everything that we're going to be using today. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this uh, off camera. Start with the 233 CPU benchmarks, etc., and then we'll swap it out for the K62333. All right, so I've got the Intel MMX CPU installed as well as video card. Sound card, even though none of these benchmarks are going to need it, but I figured I'd put it in there anyway in case I want to record some other footage, gameplay, stuff like that. CF card for the hard drive. I've got 192 megs of RAM here, and which would be more than enough. And let's go ahead. Oh, and I managed to find a uh, momentary switch here. Let me turn the light back on temporarily. And uh, a proper LED, although it's not the right color, but... They all came out of a PC, so good enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this backlight off again so we can focus better on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything on. Now, all these tools were compiled by Phil's Computer Lab. I'll leave a link below to that website. We're going to go ahead and run number two, four, and six here with regards to Doom will do B, Quake will do E, and then we'll also run uh, L, M, and N afterwards. So let's go ahead and do a 3D bench. Go ahead and I will record these separately. 163. All right. Pretty sure that's good. Let's go ahead and do number four. You now, granted, I do have a 3D accelerator in. Whether this detects it as that or not is unknown, but. Let's see what's the score. 84.8 out of 50.8. Okay. And now we'll do PC player benchmark, 640 by 480. Wondering if I can tweak some of those settings and get them to run at higher refresh or higher resolutions. Twenty-three point five. 
All right, let's go ahead and run Doom, although it's probably gonna fly on here. Twenty-one thirty-four game ticks and eight fifty-nine real ticks. I'll calculate the frames per second later. And now we're gonna run E Quake Time Demo six forty by four eighty. And we've got, out of all total 969 frames, it took 64.8 seconds and 15.0 frames per second. So, I guess that's uh, half of what you would really want, but at the same time, back in the day, that was probably acceptable for a lot of people, especially since around that time 3D accelerators were first coming out, not everyone had one, so. All right, now let's get on to standard benchmarks we will run them after a reboot because i need to disable the expanded memory so i'll be back all right and we're back and so it thinks it is a 243 megahertz at system with a just under 400 megahertz uh floating point unit or math coprocessor that's interesting i don't know if that's accurate or not because I've run this before on my NEC PC, which is a 120 megahertz Pentium, and sometimes it was detected as a 386, sometimes it was a 486, much like this one's being detected. So it's it's tough to say. This software's probably super out of date, so but we'll back out of that. And next we'll move on to Top Bench 3.0, which is option M. And it's coming up with about it's flickering between 415 and 414, so let's just say 14 and a half. I'll go ahead and just back out of that. And the last one is SpeedSys, which is N. This is going to take a little bit of time to run, so I'm just going to stop recording and come back to the very end. All right, it's on all the memory, speed testing, CPU, and everything. It's at the hard drive, which we're not going to run because it's a CF card. But as you can see, it detected everything correctly. Pentium MMX, 233 megahertz, 66 megahertz front side bus. It's, uh, there's a memory bandwidth, 480.25 megabytes per second, detects the video card, and the chipset, which it's TX2, but I believe that ALA ended up buying them out. So most important ones we want to worry about are right down here. We've got CPU, again, like I said, was uh, 173.75. The L1 cache read as 424.75 megabytes per second. L2 cache is 130.49. And the memory throughput was 91.74 megabytes per second. And here's a nice little chart so you can see everything all at once. So let's go ahead and put the uh, K62 in and compare the two CPUs and see which one is better. Although again, everyone's going to assume it's going to be the K62 because it's a faster CPU. It's got 3D now and 
Well, who knows? We'll find out. All right, let's go ahead and test the K62 now. So we'll go ahead and we'll rerun the tests again. And here are the results for the AMD K62. 3D Bench got 262. Chris's 3D Bench got 86. PC Player got 28. Doom 92. Quake 14. Landmark CPU 434. FPU 535. Although again, those are probably not entirely accurate. Top Bench 444. Speedsys CPU was 376. L1 Cache was 1536. L2 was 211, and memory throughput was 116. And now we'll look at the combined scores, just to make it easier on everybody. As you can see, AMD pretty much beat Intel in almost every category, except for Quake, which it lost by a point, but that's probably within the margin of error. And even though it beat it in top bench, wasn't that much of a uh, victory there. Same thing with speed system memory throughput, although it's the same RAM, so that's not too much of a surprise. Give it a pause if you need to take a longer look at it. Otherwise, let's continue. So the next step is to see if USB port works. Well, if it works as a USB header, I'm assuming it's going to though, based on the fact that it is an ATX form connector. I do have a USB mouse hooked up and it lights up. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install Windows 98 so we can actually verify that USB support is there. And I'm not gonna make you guys sit through the entire setup process. So we'll resume once it's installed. And before we're even fully into Windows, the mouse works. So there is USB support on this board and just plugging a standard USB header gives me access to that. Obviously I don't have access to the other ports on there, the IR port and PS2 port, but who cares? I don't need those. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting up Windows, drivers, etc., and finish playing around with it and wrap this video up. So as you can see, Windows is installed. Got the K62 running what it's labeling as a K6 3D processor. It's the K6 II. And we go to Device Manager. We do in fact have USB support. And for another verification, I've got my Ravis Gamepad Pro USB Edition set up. Uh, let's see if I can focus on, yeah, so. And it does work. And that's all there is to it so now I already installed all the drivers for the video card for the sound card etc and I have those here I also installed some games that we'll get to in a bit However, I did run into an issue with Final Fantasy VII, and it is on the latest update, which I think was 1.02. It doesn't have any third-party mods or patches or anything installed. It detects all the hardware. It doesn't know what processor it is, but this game came out during Windows 95 era, which would have been Pentium, and I may be the Pentium MMX. I don't remember, but it does detect everything else. Graphics. It does have everything passing. I do not have NVIDIA, so... We can also use the software renderer, but why would you want to? Sound is working. I'm having issues though with MIDI. Now it's supposed to be able to automatically control the uh, Sound Blaster 32 sound fonts, or if you have a newer card like the AW32, AW64, etc., it should be able to control it because it will dynamically load different sound fonts at different parts of the game. 
but it gives me this error opening device, and I don't know why. If I choose, if I choose General MIDI, it works fine, but it's using the default sound font, and it's not as good, obviously. If I choose this option, it fails as well. But if I choose General MIDI, it works fine. So for whatever reason, it cannot load sound fonts. FM synth does work though. And obvious XG MIDI is just an option there, but I don't have it installed, so it's not going to work. I don't know why it does that. I haven't been able to figure out why. But I did get sound working once. I don't know if it's going to work again. I also played the game up to the first save point, so you wouldn't have to sit through the entire intro and all of that. Oh, look at that. It's working, but I can't tell if it's the standard sound bank or if it's the Final Fantasy VII custom one. Unfortunately. I think it's the custom one because that synth part that goes doo -doo, I think that's the custom one. So Oh yeah, I mean this game would work on the K62, the K6, and everything on I think down to a Pentium 100, I believe. And this game did never did not run smoothly without any patches or anything like that. I believe 15 frames per second in battle, even though this 3D accelerator is more than powerful enough to be able to do at least 30. But yeah, so for whatever reason they limited it. I don't know if it's because of the software renderer. But it looks good, as you can see. Um, nice and clean. Fortunately, the backgrounds and the FMV videos aren't so good in the PC port, but this was the early days, so. But I'll go ahead and we'll get out of this and we'll go to another game. And the next game I'm going to try out is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. This was a release on Windows as well, Windows 95 in fact. Minimum system requirements are Pentium and uh, it supports MMX. Yeah, so you, actually at a minimum, this is what you need here. 486, 100 or, or a Pentium 75, 8 megs of RAM, SVGA. 36 colors, Sun Blaster 16 are compatible, and gamepad, joystick, etc., which we've got my gamepad. Now, you're thinking I should probably choose FM Synthesizer since, you know, the game was released on the Genesis and it was using FM Synthesis, but no. For whatever reason, it does not sound the same, probably because they're not utilizing the same effects and other quirks of the chip because they don't have direct access to it. So they probably can't recreate that experience. I'm going to play Sonic and Knuckles. It doesn't do the Sega intro. I'm going to use joystick and full screen it. But obviously a game this lightweight should run easily on this system. I mean, heck, you saw the system requirements. A 486 isn't enough, so... That's the special area. So yeah, well, I mean, that's pretty much it at this point. I'm just wasting time. So, but I wanted to, you know, make sure that everything was working properly. And Windows is relatively stable. I mean, it's Windows on the 8, so it is prone to crashing. Uh, in fact, I tried to install a couple of DOS games and run them through Windows, and they just crashed Windows for whatever reason. I'm not sure. I had to do with the sound card or accessing video. I know the uh, 
the Rage XL has kind of not it's not perfect, we'll just say that. It's got some minor issues, we'll call it. In fact, the fact that Final Fantasy VII didn't show failed on I think the it was the uh, shaders or the textures. I forget there was some compatibility issue that Final Fantasy VII had with ATI cards. It's possible that that 102 patch fixed that. I'm not sure. But that's it for this video. What you guys think of it? Leave some comments below. If you have any suggestions, leads on AT style cases and power supplies, or should I just shove this into an ATX case and hope for the best? I do have a nice older beige one that this would probably work well in, and this would be a nice little retro PC. It's not going to replace the NEC PC. That one is stu still going to be used a lot. It's still dear to my heart. So it's, you know, not going anywhere and I still need to do a proper video on it, but that's it for this video. Um, thanks all. I will catch y'all later.